my lovelies and welcome to a new episode of Substance Over Style. I'm coming at you from Phnom Penh today. Check out my view on my balcony. I'm just staying in an Airbnb. I'm here for some business. Just checking on my... Um, if you don't know, I'm launching an ethical clothing line. I've been working on it for a while. Um, I usually put the link in the description below where you can go to my website and sign up for updates. It's going to be vegan. It's all sort of sustainable, upcycled, ethically manufactured here in Phnom Penh with a lovely factory called Fairso. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make a video because some of you, thank you so much for voting on my recent Insta story that I posted the other day on uh, the 24 hour dry fast that I just completed. Um, so I asked you guys to vote if you wanted to see a YouTube video where I talk about it. Um, and most of you voted yes. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about the dry fast. So I arrived here in Phnom Penh and as with the liquid fast that I, Excuse me, I'm washing machines, making some noise. Um, let me just grab my, my coconut water. I've got my coconut water. Um, I'm drinking a lot of coconut water at the moment, so I'll just I'll get to that later though, why coconut water is so good for you. Um, but yeah, I arrived here in Phnom Penh on the in the evening and um, I just I just totally passed out. Um, yeah, well, sorry, what was I saying? I'm jumping around a little bit. Yeah, as with the liquid fast that I posted about on my Instagram, as you can see it in my Insta stories highlights, um, I was just completely just guided to do it. It wasn't like, I think it's great to set an intention and go, I'm gonna do a fast, and then kind of prepare yourself for it and then do it. But every time I've done it, it's just because I've been kind of intuitively guided towards doing it, and it's just felt really right for me at the time. And I haven't even really bothered to research it, research it that much. I've just gone and done it. So that was the same with the um, the, the three day fruit fast that I did when I first arrived in Cambodia like six months ago. Um, it was the same with the liquid fast that I did, which wasn't. I didn't follow a specific protocol for that. That ended up being eight days. I didn't even know how long. It I was going through personal shit and I didn't feel like I wanted to eat anything because I was kind of queasy. Um, so I just didn't really eat anything. For the first two days I had coffee, I think, like I usually do when I'm intermittent fasting. Um, but then after two days the coffee kind of just um, slipped away and then I was just having like one green juice a day. Sometimes I would have something with like a like a smoothie with like a nut milk. That's good to have when you're when you're um, doing like a juice fast. And I was having a tonic that I just happened to have in the fridge. It was like an apple cider vinegar tonic, which had like some coconut palm sugar and some cinnamon and some spices. Very similar to a master cleanse, if you think about it. But again, it wasn't a specific protocol that I followed. I just felt like I didn't want to get any solids or anything that I consumed was liquid. And, um, for eight days, it actually cleared up a lot of issues. I was having some sleep issues, some insomnia some nightmares I was staying up until 7 in the morning um, not not being able to get any sleep all night because my nightmares were so bad and as soon as I started doing the fast uh, the first day I just, um, just you know, started to fall asleep at 10pm um, and you know sleeping really sound as a baby but actually this video is supposed to be talking about the 24 hour dry fast not the liquid fast but um, but the reason why I'm talking about those things is because I'm saying don't go into a 24 hour dry fast if you're not used to fasting already. Um, probably you won't anyway because you won't, I don't think that you'd be intuitively guided to do something like that unless you were already used to fasting. So like I've said in my other videos on fasting, do you start doing intermittent fasting first and then graduate to more sort of intense fasts. So. Um, yeah, the 24 hour, it was soft dry fast. So there's a soft and a dry, and a soft and a hard dry fast. Hard dry fast is where you don't come into contact with any water, which sounds really intense to me, because I know that some people do it for like five days and they don't shower or brush their teeth. I'm not sure if I could do that. Um, but um, I was definitely brushing my teeth and sort of having a shower. I didn't even know that it was a thing. It was just because I arrived in Pompeii in the evening. Um, and I hadn't been shopping yet, didn't know where the local supermarket was, didn't have any water in the place because the Airbnb that I'm staying in, it's lovely but it's a bit basic, it doesn't have any sort of drinking water. Um, and because I was 
not jet lagged, but I had it like a super early, um, I had to wake up super early that morning, like at 3 a.m. to get my flight from Bali. Um, so at about 4 p.m. I just went to sleep. And it was while I was sleeping that I started getting um, menstrual cramps. And this is where it's interesting with fasting and menstruation because um, because I had cramps, I was just like, shit, okay, I'm getting my period and I don't have any stuff with me, like the tampons or whatever. Um, and there's no fucking water in the place, what am I gonna do? So I just laid an old towel on the bed um, and I just kind of stayed in bed and went to sleep. I did the whole red tent thing where, you know, I don't know if you don't know, red tent, the red tent is a very sort of ancient practice that women would engage in when they've had their period. They would all kind of go into a tent together and they bleed into the earth and connect to the the wisdom of the earth, the wisdom of their wombs, and uh, they would receive very deep insights. Um, and as women, you know, especially living in cities, we've become very disconnected from the earth and very disconnected from our natural cycles. Um, and, you know, and we're even, you know, societally we're told that, you know, if you're having menstrual cramps and you should like, you know, work, work out and exercise through it and all of that stuff, when actually that's not true at all, you shouldn't exercise. Um, I practice Ashtanga yoga and in the Ashtanga tradition they tell you to take the ladies day, so you don't do any yoga at all um, during the time that you're menstruating. I mean, you can't do inverted poses anyway. Um, so I just decided to just go within, lay on my towel, and I would sleep, I would nap for a couple of hours, then I would wake up and read, then I would fall back to sleep. And what I found was, it was mainly just because I didn't want to go, I didn't want to leave the house because, you know, I'm bleeding and I don't have any kind of protection. Um, so I didn't really know what else to do. Um, and then I noticed that, you know, 24 hours had gone by and I'd not eaten or drank anything. But it was interesting what happened with my period was, it was extremely light. I mean, you know, I'm just lying there on the bed with only a towel underneath me and I didn't, I didn't drip onto the towel at all. By the way, if you're a guy watching this and you're grossed out by this, like, I, I don't know why you would be watching this. I don't, also don't know why you'd be grossed out because it's completely natural. I'm, I'm not even going to apologize. Like, it's a totally natural thing and I don't, I'm not ashamed of my um, period. But yeah, just a, just a disclaimer anyway. Cause since I posted that incel video, um, yeah, all the misogynistic trolls have like come out in full force with some of the comments. But anyway, um, back to what I was saying. Yeah, my flow was extremely light. I, did, I hardly dripped onto the towel at all. Um, and my pain, like I said in the Insta stories where I was talking about the eight day liquid fast that I've done, the pain was very manageable. And usually, um, like, you know, over the years, I mean, I'm 33 now, but all throughout my 20s, I had the most crippling uh, menstrual cramps on the first day of my period. It would always be completely, I wouldn't be able to do anything. Sometimes I would I'd be in so much pain, I wouldn't even be able to stand up. I would just lie in bed all day with a heat pad on and um, just like masturbate all day because, yeah, sorry if that's too much information, but like giving yourself an orgasm can really, really help to um, relax your the muscles in the womb and stuff. But since I went vegan and since I've been doing intermittent fasting, my period pains have been much, much less. Um, also, the uh, what was I going to say? The last two months I've also been doing yoni steaming, and that's helped massively because a lot of the time menstrual cramps are caused by um, excessive buildup of uterine lining inside your womb, and uh, your because because that's all built up, similar to like you know how your colon. Uh, accumulates a lot of old uh, stuff, a lot of old stool which sticks to the walls and you know the only way to get it out is by a colonic. Um, yeah your womb kind of does the same thing, it accumulates lining and a lot of the time the cramps are caused by your womb contracting and trying to get it out but if you steam it once a month after your period then that basically can help a lot of that old stuff just release um, and it's not only you know just the um, the physical debris that gets released it's also like with everything a lot of emotional debris as well a lot of old traumas also the energy of past partners comes out um, so yeah so I found that doing the fast for the 24 hours if it wasn't even 24 hours it was 28 hours um, just 
it, it may, I don't know if it's because of the fast or if it's because of all these things working together, but I think it's, it, you know, it's probably a combination. Um, yeah, the, the pain was completely manageable and the flow was very light. And then as soon as I broke the fast that evening, the only reason why I broke the fast was just because a, I was lonely, so that kind of indicates just um, just how social the whole ritual of eating really is. I wasn't hungry, it was just I was feeling very isolated in my Airbnb in a new city where I don't really know anybody. And I felt like I needed to go out into the city and do something, so I went to you know, a local vegan restaurant and ate something. But I wasn't actually hungry. Um, but it was also just because I thought I'd better get some tampons. Um, but yeah, as soon as I ate, um, as soon as I finished the meal, I just suddenly got like very, very intense cramping. And it was extremely uncomfortable. And it was much more intense than it had been while I was fasting. So this is what kind of leads me to believe that it's actually, that the fasting did make a massive difference to making sure that the pain was a lot more manageable. Um, I'm sure it has lots and lots of other health benefits as well. Um, you know, I just want to kind of say that I'm not a health professional, so if you are thinking of doing this, make sure you consult a health professional, especially if you have any kind of health issues or anything like that. Do your research. Um, there's a great book that you can read. Uh, it's called Fast and Health. I'll put a link in the description box. So yeah, just make sure that you do your research. You know, don't take what I'm saying as possible. I'm literally just sharing my own experience. Um, I would definitely, definitely like to do um, a two-day dry fast um, and then eventually work up to a five-day dry fast. But like I said before, um, even though I've put the intention out there, um, I'm not going to kind of say, okay, I'm doing it on this day. I'm just going to wait until my body tells me, okay, today's the day, you know, I don't feel like eating or drinking or anything. Because that's, that's the best one. So it seems to have worked well. Um, but yeah, what am I doing now? Now I'm doing like a 22 hour um, intermittent fast. Um, I was thinking about doing a 22 hour dry fast with just one meal a day. Um, but because I'm on a period, I thought it was important to stay hydrated, which is why I'm drinking the coconut water. Coconut water is amazing if you um, are on your period because it just will hydrate you like nothing else. All those electrolytes, um, they're also great if you experience any kind of cramping or anything um, but yeah so uh, once I've finished my period and I'm doing back doing my Ashtanga I might attempt to do a 22 hour dry fast and one meal a day intermittent fasting and then see when I'm ready to kind of try doing a two day dry fast um, but yeah yeah it was a really a lot easier than I thought it would be and if anybody's thinking of giving it a go um, yeah, don't forget, do your research and put hair in my mouth. Um, yeah, make sure you do your research. Um, feel free to ask me any questions if you have any. And um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. But I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. One love. You've introduced to LSD. And unless you've, you've taken some other drug, like for instance, like um, marijuana or something. Um, well, you know, it's an altogether new thing. And um, you actually can ex have an, a 